Ready? Call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, no Miss Nasrallah, right? Okay. So we open each meeting with a hearing of visitors, an opportunity for anyone to come in front of the school committee, the mayor and the superintendent, uh, and speak for up to three minutes. Uh, tonight we did not have anyone sign in for hearing of visitors. Um, as everyone knows, we've got the student awards next door in the main auditorium. So at this point, I'll entertain a motion to recess. Motion to recess has been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Passes unanimously. Uh, we will, for people that are here from the public, um, we anticipate 45 minutes to an hour. We don't have an exact time, but my best guess is close to an hour. We'll be next door handing out awards. When the awards ceremony is done, we'll come back, come out of recess, and continue with the balance of tonight's school committee meeting. We had to open the meeting because of the open meeting law. We have to start the meeting on time. So um, at this point, uh, having the motion passed unanimously, uh, we are in recess. All right, good evening, everyone. It's great to have you all here with us tonight for awards night. Uh, and to open tonight's uh, ceremonies, I would like to ask everyone to please rise for the presentation of colors at Brockton High School JRO. <laughs> This time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance.
Thank you. Please be seated. Also unable to be here. 
The next group we want to talk, to, talk about tonight is the Ashfield School Group. This is the eighth grade group from the Ashfield. They came in fourth place this year with a total score of 90 points. The participants from Ashfield are Megan Seal, Jalen Bridges, who's unable to attend, Jared Viola, Jake Jerome, unable to be here, Tom Bolello, not here as well. Thank you very much. The next group is the Plus Academy as a grade 17 as well. They came in second place with a total score of 91 points. The group is led by Michael Perdoff. Next, Samantha Gideon. Anthony Pham, Alexis Farmer, and Ronan Court. Our grade 16 from Cliff Academy came in second place with a total score of 111 points. Members of that, that team are Brian Aruna. Grant Guest, Grace Donovan, Oma Seffi, and Number Hari. And our last school from North Middle School, a grade 16, came in fourth place in the region with a 92 point. We have Josh Vega. Isaiah Selden, Gianni Lutamato, Andre Cordero, Isaiah Gutierrez. Leslie Cabrera Luna from Cook Academy. 
for Friday when your iPad is ready to die exercise. Second place at the Regional Fair. Erin Hamlin from Flip Academy for Friday Running on Water. Second place at the Regional Fair. And our last project by Mary Kurdoff for Flip. Musical Electricity. She was the top grand prize winner at the Regional Fair. Congratulations to all those who. Also from the Kennedy 
Jason Hillis Jr. Also from the Kennedy, Peter Johnson. And as well from the Kennedy, Brady Whip. From the Hancock, we had Kamal Boulet and Jason Latour. Also from the Hancock, Anna Zuckerman. From the Huntington, we're very well represented. We have Nelson Andrade, Denisa Andrade, Josiana Gomes, Anthony Monchon, and Fabio Pires Montero. From the Angelo, we have Iana Hunter, Renee Long, Casey Tan, Brady Aruda, Andrew Bealy, Renee Halstead, Kyle Rodriguez, Monica Trent,
also have um, uh, auto commission for junior individual performance from West Middle School, Didi Tosego. And then for the junior individual website category from the Book School, we have Erin Hamlin. Thank you. 
music festivals, which is sponsored by the Massachusetts Music Education Association. This three-day event took place in Boston this past March, with students throughout the state performing in different musical ensembles, finishing the event with a performance at Symphony Hall. This year, we're pleased to announce that five members of the Brockton High School Music Program were selected to represent Brockton High School uh, to perform with the Austin Chorus. Please welcome the following students. Nathaniel Smith. Eric McLaren. Brian Vestless. Macaulay Bursey. Michelle Garcia. Now, we need to speak to the director of our program, um, Sarah Richards. Joshua 
We had uh, five gold all scholastics. We had three Herald all scholastics, 33 Enterprise all scholastics, and 111 big three all stars. Two National Letter of Intent Division One signees. So without further ado, for the fall season for football, Aaron Montero, Enterprise, Boston Gold, and Herald All Scholastics. Enterprise All Scholastic and Boston Gold, All Scholastic. Marcus Pullen, Enterprise, All Scholastic. Boys Soccer, Louis Pinto, Enterprise, All Scholastic. Girls Soccer, Jennifer Peruso, Enterprise, All Scholastic. Ariana Sylvia. Oh, wait, I'll wait.
and offered free tennis instructions to young people from the city of Rockton at the uh, Gilmore School Playground. So I wanted to issue uh, a citation from the city of Brockton to the Brockton High Girls Tennis Team in recognition of their spirit of volunteerism. They taught the game in which they excel to those who are eager to learn. For that, the city is grateful. You are living proof that winning does not always happen on the court. The most important victories are those that take place in the community. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this citation as a symbol of our appreciation. This citation is duly signed by myself, the Mayor of the City of Rockford, on this day, the 2nd of June. And I'd like to invite up uh, to receive the award, along with Coach Danito, Dominique Tran, Hallie Jeremy, and Ruby Patel. At 8.13, we'll call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee back to order and back from recess and pick up with the agenda right where we left off, which is with the consent agenda. For those that aren't familiar, the consent agenda, agenda is a mechanism in which the school committee can handle multiple pieces of routine business as one block uh, to keep the meeting moving along. However, any individual school committee member may request that an item in the consent agenda be removed for individual consideration. So at this time I'll ask if there are any members of the committee that would like to remove an item from the consent agenda. Hearing and seeing no one, I'll entertain a motion. Motion's been made. Second. Seconded by Mr. Jordan to approve the consent agenda in its entirety. All in favor? Opposed? Approved unanimously. So at this point, it's uh, my pleasure to turn uh, the meeting over to the Superintendent of Schools for the report on learning and teaching. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and I want to thank everybody out there, uh, again, that supported this event this evening. Uh, not just this event, this time of year is wonderful to see the scholarships, the academics, uh, all of what we just saw on that stage is really what makes Brockton great. And I thank everybody out there that continues to support our students. Um, and saying that, I'd like to turn this over to our student representative, and I'm sure she'll be able to tell us all of the wonderful things leading up to graduation coming this Saturday. Jess? Um, I'd actually like to start by uh, mentioning last Thursday, it was um, Brockton High School's senior breakfast and prom, and um, everyone said the breakfast was delicious, and um, that it was just great being able to share all the memories that they had shared with their classmates throughout the year with the administrators. And they said prom was very classy, and they had a wonderful time. So thank you to all our chaperones and everyone who attended. Um, tomorrow night is the music department's last concert of the year. It's our Pops concert, so don't miss it tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. It's going to be fabulous, and there will be a flying chicken. So you have to come. You have to be there. Um, and this Saturday is Brockton High School's graduation. It begins at 2 p.m. at Marciano Stadium. So you should come and support all of our seniors who will be graduating. Congratulations to all of you. We're all very proud at Brockton High School. And book awards for the class of 2016 are Monday, June 8th. And also on Mondays is Science MCAST 
and June 9th, Tuesday. So to everyone taking MCAS, it's a science MCAS, don't forget to get a really good night's sleep and a great breakfast in the morning. So good luck to everyone taking MCAS. And that's what's happening here at Brockton High. With all of the wonderful things happening, you see that academics continue at our schools, uh, testing, exams, and school continues even after this Saturday. Um, again, uh, we are looking at uh, two meeting dates uh, for the summer for our school committee meetings. Uh, we're recommending July 21st. Uh, a number of us are, are away the second week in July when we normally would have had it at the superintendent uh, conference and that's uh, I think the 13th of July uh, through the 18th. So we're recommending July 21st Tuesday and also August 18th for our meeting in August. Uh, that'll be when the principals return uh, that week. Um, also um, the calendar uh, where at a point where the uh, Brockton Education Association does have a meeting uh, this Thursday to ratify the contract. Uh, there is language in there that does affect our calendar. But looking at the calendar uh, for the first reading this evening, uh, we have already talked about, um, just get this open, school uh, beginning on, uh, the teachers reporting on September 1st, the students first day will be on Wednesday, September 2nd, and looking at the calendar, with five snow days built in, we would end school this year on June 22nd if we did not need to use those snow days, taking five days off our last day of school would be June 15th. And I think looking ahead at what has happened the past couple of winters, uh, we have done certainly, uh, I think, an excellent job this year. I, again, uh, it's amazing that we're getting out this year on the 26th of June, a half a day. So you do have some days built in, and I want to remind everybody that the last day that we could attend school would be on the 30th of June. Can you clarify, are you talking about the 15th, 15th calendar? I am. Because I have teachers reporting September 1st. I'm sorry, teachers report September 1st, the students report September okay. 2nd. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Tuesday, September 1st, the teachers are reporting. So any, any questions on the calendar at this point? I do want to also remind everybody that uh, as we go forward, one of the things that I'm looking at uh, this summer is uh, professional development days. So we will do our supplemental calendar that will build in uh, our half-day schedules, and some of that will include some additional professional development days for our staff for this coming year. And I also want to... Uh, I bring to your attention a, a couple of things. First of all, I want to thank um, the mayor, and uh, we of course have had, again, what else can happen, but we had a water main break, and just thinking of all of the different departments that came together to make sure that our children were in school, that they were able to remain and focus on academics for the day. I want to thank the parents. We sent word out to parents not knowing what was happening during that process. We had a couple of schools that immediately went offline, other schools that it was difficulty with the sinks, the flushing of toilets, etc. all of those things that make up our day at school. And again, um, I want to thank the parents for supporting us, for helping out. I want to thank the mayor's office, of course our, our DPW department, because when you think of you know, the kids that were able to attend that first day, we were right back in session that second day. I know our DPW worked throughout the evening, and we really didn't skip a beat. So again, uh, please understand that when we deal with situations like this, we need to have communication, which I feel was excellent, and also the support of our parents to make sure that our children are safe and uh, are in an environment where they are able to learn academically. Um, I also want to uh, bring to your attention uh, during this past spring, we had a conference, an educator evaluation conference that's put on all over the state to talk about best practices. And I want to remind you, if you go back a year, Brockton was so-called under the gun. We had 100% of our teachers that need to be evaluated. And this year, with our, our EdEval specialist, our head teachers, our joint task uh, labor management force, looking at EdEval, we had two of our presenters, uh, Yolanda DeFalco and Michelle Connors, and I received word from the DESC how fabulous the presentation was. I believe this was actually on the day of the water main break. I was unable to attend the conference, but I want to thank them again for uh, putting Brockton out there, for continuing to move forward, and an evaluation process that I think has brought a lot of credibility, certainly to our profession, and I'm very, very pleased we were able to present uh, at that conference. 
um, and uh, items to refer to subcommittee. Yeah. So at this time, if that you have some, Superintendent. I do. Uh, I think. Uh, I think uh, again, Mr. Minicello, you had asked about pending items to go before subcommittee. So a couple of things I think we'd like to take a look at. Um, we do need to look at policy. We need to finalize the policy use policy, and also. Um, we right now with our administrative interns have an updating of the policy manual. I know they have reached out to I think both Mrs. Joyce and Andy Robinson. I think you've talked to our team working on the policy and hopefully as we start to put negotiations behind us I think this is something that we'd like to come up with a schedule looking at the year ahead so we can start to look at updating a, a number of the policies. And the other one on there of course is the superintendent uh, contract, the superintendent evaluation. And uh, as usual, I think it keeps getting, you know, pushed to the background with budget, with all of the things that we're dealing with in the spring, but I'd like to set up a date for that. Do you want to get back to us on dates for those? We'll put together some dates this summer, but that at least gives you an update. Uh, Mr. Dr. Wanda, and we'll figure out, we'll coordinate some th dates for okay. those meetings. Good. Do you want them on a Sunday? Is that when you'd like them? <laughs> yeah. A Sunday afternoon, if you can. Not Fourth, anymore. How about Fourth of July? <laughs> How's that? <laughs> so. Don't tempt me. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, under unfinished business? Well, it, it, any members of the school committee that have an item that they would like to refer to subcommittee? No? Okay. So under unfinished business, uh, we'll have a report on the FY16 budget. Okay, uh, again, um, I just want to remind everybody that uh, Wednesday evening we are presenting before the City Council. You know, one of the things that I'll talk about this year to the City Council is, I know, Mayor, you presented, I believe, last evening. I think everybody in the community knows that we continue to deal with, you know, difficult budget, you know, certainly throughout our city. Uh, that doesn't mean we're, we're working very, very hard. We're looking to identify every dollar that we possibly can to support our students in education. Tomorrow night the presentation will simply be about conversation about what we feel we need for a budget. Um, I'm going to spend quite a bit of time talking about Chapter 70, talking about the, the Commission and the Task Force to look at Chapter 70 and making sure the Council and the public understand that going forward there are a number of things that certainly affect an urban district's budget. So I plan to talk to the City Council about that and also tomorrow evening. One of the things that I think we have talked about as a school committee and I think it's very, very important as we go forward is to, talk, to start to look back at uh, 19, actually certainly before 1993. But when you talk about the McDuffie case that came up through the court system and talked about equity in educating our urban students, we are absolutely seeing an eroding of services. Whether it's grants that were entitlement for urban districts are now competitive. Whether it's looking at, again, Chapter 70 and how we evaluate English language learners and support. How we evaluate high poverty. How we evaluate, again, homeless students that we continue to support. And I keep saying that nobody does it better. But again, we're a large urban center and we need to make sure that we give our, our students a fighting chance. So I will be talking to the City Council about support this summer. I know Mayor, you and I have spoken about yeah, this absolutely. and certainly the school committee is to invite a representative from the City Council, our school committee, to start to talk about where we go from here. Because I do believe that other urban districts will join us and I think it's time to really take a look at how we're supporting uh, urban education. We can't continue to go down this line. Um, it has been a very very difficult budget the past couple of years. We have uh, done a good job this year of trying to prioritize, bring back s some programs. And one of the things when we left our finance committee meeting last week, and we do have a subcommittee meeting coming up on June 9th, is we had a couple of decisions to make around school adjustment counselors and how they would be utilized depending on the numbers that we brought back. So we're working on that. We will present that on the 9th. And we will continue to look at, if, if you look at the uh, number of layoffs, we have identified with our certified staff 173 layoffs. I believe, again, we have to look at a few numbers uh, next Tuesday. But we pretty much have it down to, at this point, 125. So as we continue to uh, look at other funding that becomes available, um, certainly when I say other funding, we're talking about our own efficiencies as we continue to look at our budget. So the 165 uh, million, 165. 
point, there was point yeah, 0.033. Basically 165. Um, that's what we will present to the City Council uh, on Wednesday evening. Questions, discussion? Mr. Minichello? When do we expect the results of the um, new look, so to speak, at the Chapter 70 formula? When is that supposed to be? that process complete. Does Mr. Petronio have a better handle on that? Or? I think it's supposed to be later this summer. But Mr. Petronio can also share with you some of the things that we're hearing. He recently had a conference with MASBO. So we're kind of picking up on um, and I, I'm glad you brought that up Mr. Minicello because one of the things I will talk to the City Council about when I talk about Chapter 70 and you've heard me say that ALDO was at every single one of those hearings throughout the state. Didn't matter if it was in Western Mass. I believe he went up there on the Friday night to make sure he could be there early on that Saturday morning. He and I traveled to the Cape. We made sure that we were heard at every one of those meetings and a lot of the same themes but we made sure every time we were able to talk about what we need to run an urban district. A week or so ago I was at the state um, school business officers conference down in uh, Cape Cod and both there was um, Secretary Pizer and Alice Peisch who's on the, the Chapter 70 committee, she's a state rep. Um, she chaired it with uh, Senator Chang Diaz and they're the ones that listened to all the different school business officers and you know superintendents across the state. What they said was that in the summer at some point they'll make a recommendation to the Department of Ed as to what they feel the new formula should be shaped towards and then at some point after that um, they'll go back and develop the actual formula. But, oh, the, but she did lead, I asked some questions, one of which that was, um, I thought, very primary for us was we had asked to move the October 1st date to mid-year. And part of the reasoning behind that is you have schools that kind of, you know, take our students but then send them back and they're less likely to send them back if they've had them for half a year. Plus we also have a growth of a couple hundred students over the course of the year. We could pick up some of that. So at first they were receptive, but she mentioned about a week or so ago that they're not going to look at that, that they're, they're not leaning that way, but they are looking at um, you know, our additional health insurance costs. And we asked that maybe tying the uh, increases in our health budget to the GIC plan in the state. We kind of mirror it, so if the GIC plan goes up 5%, they'll hopefully change our allotment by that amount. As you know, the past year uh, was about a 1.4% inflation factor. Last year was a 0.86% inflation factor. And again, at these hearings, I argued that you can't justify that factor when 85% of our budget is you know, personal services, and a big part of that is health insurance. So they're looking at that just for that piece of the formula, though. The rest, they want to um, base it off of um, just an aggregate state figure as far as increases across all um, state or municipal business. So that's a much lower figure. Um, they're looking at doing something for ELL and something for um, special education. But they really indicated they're not going to do much for poverty. They think that that's already pretty much represented well in the system. But the biggest argument you saw across the state was poverty, that the districts that showed up and were, came up to the microphone were the districts that had high poverty levels. And what they were asking for was the funding to take these, um, these children who have more than just a learning disability because of their background and do something for them. But it doesn't appear they're going to do much for that. very slight increase but I don't think it's going to be adequate that's my prediction so I think that what we need to do is we need to see what the end result is going to be but my feeling is that we need to take steps to um, you know, bring some sort of a, a, a relook through the, um, the courts on this thing because you know if Mr. Petronio is accurate which I know he always is our needs are still not going to be met and like you said the needs of our students um, increase the issues that um, you know, the city and like cities that, uh, that, that we all deal with you know are, aren't getting easier um, it's more involved and with respect to the um, mandates that are on us with respect to the um, level of performance that the state expects and the progress they expect us to make the AYP um, you know, we're going to need to um, 
you, you know, you get what you pay for. And if you're not willing to pay for it, you know, they're going to point the finger at districts like Brockton and, and other urbans and, and criticize. Well, I think it's time that we make them put their money where their mouth is, you know. So, um, I mean, we'll see what the end result is, but I have a funny feeling. I don't have a funny feeling. I have a feeling that we're going in, uh, you know, direction of litigation once again, so. Wall. Um, I was at uh, an event at Bridgewater State University actually during the winter and it was interesting there were a couple of state representatives there and a state senator, not, not our representatives, a state senator. And Amando Vieira who is a teacher at the high school and has worked in a number of our programs in the summer, the CEL program, the SEAT program that support our, bi our bilingual youngsters in providing additional time for them to learn. These were all part and parcel of our programs in Brockton along with our academic support programs for all our students. We're watching again, which is why I'm going to tell you the word erode is going to be out there. And what was interesting about Armando is he basically said to them, we developed our own curriculum. We actually saw gains academically. You know, we, this was a program that was working. Why would you cut something like this? There were really no good answers. So we know how to educate our students. Many times they need a little bit of additional time. Last night I met with over a hundred bilingual parents speaking many different languages. It was their PAC meeting. And it, you know, these are the things that they want for their children. They want that additional support, that homework help, that academic support, those extracurricular activities. They want parents to be supported with instruction in, in the English language so that they can continue to support our students. So these are things that make urban districts very unique and it isn't that we don't do it well and why you would cut those kinds of programs that are starting to show results. We're seeing this across the board um, and I do feel it's an attack on urban education. It's, it's a very different you know, kind of student many times that comes, that comes through our doors. So again, I, I think the time is right. Um, as far as the chapter 70, we're not sure when we'll actually get the final report. But I think it's, incumb it's incumbent upon us this summer to really take a look at where we're headed and to be prepared. Any further discussion on the budget of Chapter 70? So Lizzie? Yeah, it kind of was included, but we've gotten three year grants and a national grants to come in. And then at the end of three years, we're expected to pick up that cost and it's just not there. We don't have it and yet it's, it is a mandate that's some of that unpaid mandate I assume that Tom was talking about too that should be included with this. So, so we'll look forward to continuing that conversation but I know the superintendent and I have discussed it several times along with some of the school committee members and you know I'm not optimistic at all as how we're going to do out with the, the look at chapter 70. I, when I go to mass municipal meetings there are more communities there lobbying against us than for us. There are more suburbs who feel as though the cities are getting too much money and they don't get enough. So it's not that we're just trying to get what we think is justified in an increase. I think we're fighting to hold on to what we have because there's political pressure from the suburbs and they have more representatives than we do um, to, to tweak the formula back the other way that would take away from the city. So. Uh, I'm in complete agreement uh, with the superintendent that you know, I think the time has come that we we do need to file a lawsuit on behalf of one of our students. And it's a long time consuming process, but I think at least puts them on notice and uh, you know perhaps that might affect some change, but at least we, we've got to get that time clock running because if it's going to take several years uh, to get a decision on a suit, then I think, you know, time is of the essence. So I know we still need to have some additional conversations amongst the school committee and the city council. Um, and I don't want to speak for the superintendent, but I think we're pretty much in agreement on this that, um, you know, our job is to fight for our kids. And there's no question right now at the state level that they are not giving us a sufficient adjustment for English language learners. They're not giving us a sufficient adjustment for the percentage of low-income students we have. And they're also not recognizing the burden on a system like Brockton when they fill up three or four hotels full of homeless families and then those children become homeless children in our school system 
and you know I, I think we have about 10 percent of the homeless population of the state is in the city of Brockton right now so um, if the state is going to locate everyone here then we ought to be getting some assistance to, to help pay for the cost of those students who are also very expensive to educate and I think you know to be clear you know as a school system you know we welcome those children with open arms just like we have many other groups of children but we still need the money to pay for the education and if the state's going to choose to have us I, I think we have what, approximately 500 students in the system right now that would a little be over a little over 500 students in our system that are categorized as homeless um, you know how many do you think they have in Easton you know, how many do you think they have in Wellesley not very many um, and so a very high percentage of those kids bring some real additional needs with them uh, they're behind they're poor they're not some are not speaking English they may have trauma going on in their life I mean there's a lot of stuff going on with those kids and, and we take on that challenge but it's an expensive challenge and if the state's going to put us in that position they ought to be helping us pay the bill so I, uh, I don't mean to sound too negative but you know we just look at these cycles the past couple of years and you know even this year when we were able to send over from local funding state and local funding about five million dollars more than we did last year but the problem is when I sit down with the superintendent and the school committee the cost of doing business went up ten so you know it's a structural deficit that's built in each year and it's happened for several years in a row now so it's we are getting we're getting some more money each year and we're able to send over more money each year but yet the gap is going the wrong way because each year the the increase that we get in in school aid does not cover the increased costs each year between rising enrollments and all the other factors that I mentioned you know, I was hopeful when they were considering pushing the date back for the uh, in terms of determining our enrollment for the year that would have been a huge benefit to Brockton because we have students coming in all year long and we do have some of the other schools sending us back students after October 1st so they send a student back to us after October 1st we educate the student they keep the money for the year so um, we, we really do have some issues to address here and so while we're um, continuing to do the best we can with this year's budget I do think it's time for us to also look at the longer view and realize that you know we didn't get equitable funding last time until the courts were involved and I think it's becoming pretty apparent to me again that we're not going to get equitable funding again until we get the courts involved and so you know let's let's get started Good. <coughs> Oh, back to me. All right. New business. Uh, approval of the accounts review subcommittee meeting report. Is that a recent one or are the minutes already in the... That's you? Um, Give yeah. us a report, Andy. Uh, well, the accounts review subcommittee um, met actually just prior to this meeting tonight. Okay. Um, after discussion, a motion was made by myself to accept uh, the accounts reviewed from the period of uh, February 18th through June 1st of 2015. Um, and uh, following that discussion, a uh, motion was made to adjourn. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll. So I guess uh, the motion. We're looking, looking for a motion to accept the report. Motion to accept the report of the accounts review subcommittee. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Approved unanimously. So in the same spirit, we also need a, an approval of the bid review subcommittee meeting report. Ms. Clark. Uh, meeting of the bid review subcommittee meeting was held this evening at 635. Um, there were two bids discussed. One was for the FY16 floor finishing supplies, and the other was for the linear and paper supplies. And a motion was made by Mr. Jordan to accept the bids as prevent, presented. Um, Ms. Sullivan accepted, and then a motion was made to adjourn, and the meeting was adjourned at 6.44 p.m. I don't think we need any action on the items. We just need to vote to accept the report. 
I believe. Tom, that sound right to you? Yep. Motion's been made and properly seconded to accept the report. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Approved unanimously. And then we have, uh, not in your books, but on a separate sheet, to not make the press in time to get into the booklet. Uh, but we do have a request uh, for participation in the National History Day contest uh, from Pliff Academy. Do you want to bring them up to talk, or you just want to sure. do it? Principal Nasrallah Principal is there. Principal Nasrallah, would you like to come up and give us a, a brief overview of this very exciting news? It's somewhat a continuation of our awards uh, <laughs> recognition next door. Mayor Carpenter, Superintendent Smith, good evening to everyone. We are very excited about our three students, Lara Cardoza, Megan Ortendahl, and Alexandra Yunus, who will be attending the National History Day competition in Washington, D.C. from June 14th through June 18th. Mr. Kowalik and Mrs. McNair, our librarian, have done a wonderful job preparing our students, but their determination and passion for learning their creativity and ingenuity have truly paid off, and we're extremely proud of their accomplishments. Mr. Kowalik? Thank you. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, if you could just speak to your projects briefly, I would greatly appreciate that. Okay. Um, I did my project on Thomas Edison, and as a lot of you probably know, Thomas Edison came to Brockton and while doing this project I learned a lot about his, the history in the city and it makes me really proud to be from Brockton. Um, me and Laura did our project on Mamie Till. A lot of people don't know who Mamie Till is, but if you know who Emmett Till is, that was um, it's the mother of Emmett Till. Emmett Till got murdered in 1955 because he flirted with a white woman. So when he got murdered, his mother, instead of like um, going around telling people, trying to make them feel bad for her, he, she went around and helped other children out like to get scholarships or help them into school and tell them the story of it so that they could get motivated. Um, we just think that it's like really important to tell her story because she was a really inspiring woman, and not really people know, not many really, not many people really know about her story. But she should be known for what she did. The competition itself will take place at the University of Maryland. Uh, Megan and Laura will already be down in Washington. They will be traveling with our group from. Um, June 12th through the 14th, their parents will meet them on the 14th and there will be a safe transfer from the school to the parents. <laughs> Alexandra will be traveling down to Washington with her family. Their parents will act as chaperones throughout. And once again, I would like to commend Megan and Laura because their project will be on display at the American History Museum for the Smithsonian. Um, museums. We're very, very proud of all three young ladies. You. Along with that, I would like to ask for $1,497 <laughs> to send them to Washington and amidst all the budget um, crisis, but I think they are most worthy, most deserving of this opportunity and of this experience. Uh, that money would cover uh, entry fee for all three contestants, uh, lodging fee, and I believe a bus. There's also a bus when there's a delegation goes down on the bus together. I'm sure we're able to find the money yeah. to support so, yes. our students. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so I guess the motion, I believe, would be both to approve the out-of-state trip and to appropriate the funding of fourteen hundred ninety-seven dollars. Sure. All of those expenses. 
those are the expenses the district traditionally covers. Uh, you're right. The, the, it's not all the lodging, but it's um, for two, for the contestant and one chaperone, all additional lodging funds are picked up by the parents. So uh, the funds, I believe it's 354 per student, uh, rather for student and chaperone times three, uh, three times the entry fee, but everything above that the parents would have to yeah, pay for. It. Yeah, that's just a fraction of what it's it, going to cost it is, them yeah. to go there. And the parents are going to be with them throughout the duration of the That's of correct. The, the time. So is there anybody from the Pluff Academy going? Uh, no. no. So it's just the parents and the it students? It will be the parents with their students, yes. Okay. Um, this is a great opportunity, and we're very proud of all of you, and we know that you'll represent Brockton very well, and uh, we'd love to know how you do. I'm actually glad you said that. Their homework is to put Brockton Public Schools on the national map. <laughs> we told them to do that. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, congratulate the three students and Ms. Nazarella and the teachers. Um, these were the only three students in our middle school district that, in our district that passed the state level and is now going to the national level. It's Thank quite you. an accomplishment. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Kowalik and Mrs. McNair have worked extremely hard with all of our students, getting them ready. Thank I you. Can tell. Mr. Jordan. Speak, if I may have a motion. So moved. Okay. Motion has been made. Properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Proved unanimously. On behalf so of the much. committee in the city. We Thank you. Wish you the best. We're all rooting for you, and we're exceptionally proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Parents stand up for the parents out yeah. there that will be accompanying their students. Could you stand up? Yeah, there please? we go. Let's have the parents. Congratulations. Alexandra, save that project now because we're working on getting a historic district for downtown Brockton and Thomas Edison is a big part of that uh, recognition for the historic district and we're actively working on that right now. So we may need her help. All right. Does anyone else on the committee have any further new business? No, hearing the seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, made and properly seconded. All in favor? This motion, this motion, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.